Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to yet another video on my YouTube channel, Mr. B Diz Electronics. So, in this video, we'll be attempting a repair of the display and a broken back glass of the Galaxy A7 2018 model. So, this is not my first DIY repair. If you like this kind of video, consider subscribing and also check out my previous repair attempts. So, let's get on with this video and the repair attempt. So as you can already see the back glass is broken and due to prior repair attempts by other repair shops uh, I don't know uh, the back glass came off very easily and if you don't know how to take off the back glass uh, of the phones of these smartphones you can check out my previous videos where I go into much more details of heat and using uh, cards to pry it off. In this one we need only to salvage the camera glass which we will do in later on. So as you can see glue residues all over it was a botched repair attempt by the previous uh, repair people or the shops and almost all of the screws are missing which makes my uh, repair attempt much more easier or harder I don't know but nonetheless the screws here are all Phillips and we have as you can see all of the screws are missing and lots and lots of glue residue and these two flex cables are the one that we need to be careful of. So here I'm using a very small magnet to keep track of whatever screw is left in this phone. So here you can see we have got a mid frame, a middle plastic frame. Before prying it off, always take out the SIM tray as you can see I've done already. And simply using your nail or any other pry tool, uh, gently pry it off. In this specific phone's model, the fingerprint slash the power button and the volume button flex cable is adhered to this mid frame and it is pressure fitted to the contact points on the motherboard. So be extra careful and don't pry it off too much so that you don't tear any kind of flex cables in the process. And as you can see it came off quite easily and you can see the flex cable how they are in the mid frame. This is the mid frame itself with the thermal material as well as all the contact points for the buttons and other antennas and this is the motherboard itself with the battery display and everything this is a flex cable which connects the daughter board to the main motherboard i just probably uh, took it off for to keep it separate so that it doesn't tear off in the process and this is the flex cable for the display itself So to separate the display, uh, you can see that there is a small seam in here. The display simply is adhered to a back plate and you can just use your nail or pry tool to take off the display using heat is necessary but as this phone was repaired previously, it wasn't necessary in this case and it came off quite easily. And as you can see, I just used my nail to create a gap and I just pushed my uh, card in this is what i have please do remember these are diy friendly videos that i make using minimal tools that i have at home and most of the people will have who are trying to attempt at least any kind of repair of any kind of electronic devices so no specialized equipments are required so this was the display i mean a copy display that was present on the phone itself it had got all kinds of holograms and markings on the back showing that it was not an original display by any chance and these are all the glue residues that are left behind we need to clean them off as much as possible so that the new display can sit flush with the frame itself so we need to do that and after cleaning off most of the glue residues let's take out the replacement display as this phone's model is quite old, I didn't go for an original OLED display which costs a lot still because it's a Samsung OLED. So I went for a cheap LCD display so that the phone itself becomes functional and we can squeeze a little bit life out of it. So this is an LCD display. So we can see the blue protective plastic. We need to peel those off before adhering the display to the device itself. There is also a front protective plastic. I recommend to keep it on until the end. Otherwise the glue sometimes seeps to the front of the display and uh, cleaning it off is a bit of a hassle once it hardens or dries off. 
Nonetheless, before adhering any of the replacement parts or display or battery or anything like that in any of my repair attempts you will see in my previous videos also, I like to test fit that part to the device. I mean like connect everything up, power it on and test its functionality before actually gluing it on or screwing it on whatever may be the case. So in this case I am doing the same. And while fixing these kind of flex cables if you get confused about the direction or where to connect what most of the cases they are marked in this case main and sub main means the main motherboard side and sub means the daughter board side so you should not get confused because it is clearly labeled so i have connected most of the parts but in this case i need to also connect the mid frame as the power button actually is located uh, in this mid frame and we need it to turn on the device we can also short the pins but i didn't want to risk it because uh, finding out the pins is a bit of a hassle at least for me uh, because let's face it i am just a diy repair person i'm not an expert in this so i am just sticking it on there because these are held on by clips and not glue or screws or anything it's quite easy and just pressing it on because it is pressure fitted and it vibrated and we are greeted with the galaxy a7 boot screen as you can see so the display is working so that's a very good news because most of these let's face it these are replacement chinese displays so there is no guarantee or warranty of any kind so here i'm just testing out the touch functionality if it is working or not it's working and this is the t7000 glue that i use in almost all of my repair videos this is the only glue tube that i bought like years ago and it is still serving the purpose and uh, i don't like to use too much just around the seam just carefully lift up the display i do it while the phone is still on to see that if i didn't break anything because let's face it after gluing it becomes a bit of a hassle to take it off and replace the part again so the display part is done and now it's time for the replacement back glass so i have bought it in black same as before this is not an original or an oem back glass of any kind these are again reproduction items and you can see it has got pre-applied glues but i don't trust them so i use t7000 again for adhering the back glass but in this case we need to salvage the camera glass from the previous broken back glass and this is also held on by glue so simply prying it off be careful uh, so that you do not get tricked by any kind of shards of glass from the broken back glass too many glasses in this sentence but nonetheless uh, here i'm applying the glue to the camera lenses i mean the lens glass Simply take the camera lens glass and line it up and here you can see it get adhered to the back glass itself. In this type of cases uh, make sure that none of the glue seeps inside the glass itself uh, if it does immediately clean it off. So here I am using a very soft microfiber cloth to clean off the excess glue and also to clean inside the glass itself otherwise you will get bloody images once everything is glued and fitted in so that will defeat the purpose of the repair itself and as i already told i am applying the t7000 glue to the back of the phone itself before sticking on the glass just a little amount of glue goes a long way And with that we are done now it's time to tape it up and leave it overnight for the glue to dry and work its magic so if you like diy repair videos diy tech videos gadget videos consider subscribing to mr b does electronics and i'll catch you guys in the next upcoming video peace